Welcome to part two of our graphing series. In our last video, we learned about the anatomy of a graph, different types of graphs, and how to read a graph. In this video, we're gonna dive a little deeper and look at some complex trends, bell curves, and error bars. In part one, we showed you a lot of straight lines, but it's good to know that data distributions can be more complicated than a straight line. A common one you'll see is a bell curve. This means that the Y value increases to a point and then decreases. If you graph it like this, it looks like a curve, but what does that mean? To understand that, let's look at an example from biology, enzyme activity at different temperatures. Enzymes don't work well at temperatures that are too low or too high, but they have a Goldilocks zone in the middle that's just right for high enzyme activity. And bell curves are not just limited to textbooks. If we grabbed 100 randos off the street and measured how tall they are, we would find that the majority are within a small range of heights. And then there would be extremes where people are really, really tall or really, really short. The width of the curve gives you an idea of the range of the data. These curves can be wide, covering a lot of different points, or really narrow, and we would miss this variability if we just took an average. So let's take some data and build a graph of our very own. You may remember that humans are diploid organisms, meaning they have two copies of each of their 23 chromosomes. Plants, on the other hand, are a bit more rock and roll with their chromosome count. If we look at the genomes of common crops, we see huge variability in their ploidy, the number of copies of each chromosome. In our examples here, they go from diploid, like you and me, to octoploid, which means they have eight copies, total overachievers. And let's look at how many unique chromosomes they have. Barley has 14, which is a tiny number, compared to sugarcane, which has 80. If we plot these data, ploidy and chromosome number, there's not a clear experimental variable because we didn't do an experiment. But here we placed ploidy on the x-axis, assuming it would be the more regular of the two variables. Now we have this plot and it isn't very pretty. So let's try to clean it up. One thing we could do is average the number of chromosomes for each ploidy. If we zoom in on a ploidy of two, we can see that there are eight different data points in that column. We could cut that down by taking an average. This would make the graph look like this. Ha, <sighs> that's cleaner, but we lost something. We can't see the variability that we had barley with 14 chromosomes, soybean with 40, cotton with 56. Instead, we see a single point at 29.5. Plotting data this way is like summarizing an episode of your favorite TV show to your friends. In the name of simplicity, you lose a lot of detail. So how can we keep things simple while retaining some of those details? Here we can use bars like this. These are called error bars. And in this case, error doesn't mean that the data are wrong. Error bars give us a better idea of how much variability there is in our data. If the points are close together, those error bars are gonna be really small. But if there's a wider distribution in points, the error bars are going to be large. It's sort of like an episode recap. It hits the big points, but you do lose some of the smaller details. Now let's wrap up with a summary of everything you've learned. Data are not necessarily a straight line. It can have its ups and downs and that's okay. Trends like these can be captured on complex line shapes like on a bell curve. Because data are variable, they're often averaged. The average is surrounded by error bars, which give you an idea of the variety of data points represented by that average. A picture is worth a thousand words, and graphs are the pictures that scientists use to describe their experiments. Whether you're using visible biology, your textbook, or looking at a news article, you're going to run into a graph. Hopefully now you feel a little more confident in your ability to interpret the data. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, if you're interested in taking a 3D dive into biology, check out Visible Biology by visiting visiblebody.com.